Hello, this is Dr. Larry Green. I'm the founder of Mukashi Cycle, and today I'd like to show you how to assemble our offloading machine. The machine is used for tipping and safely controlling the release of liquid tea from the fermented food waste out of a 55-gallon barrel. So I have the components for the machine spread out on the surface here. It's a little noisy, it's a little overcast. Hopefully this will all become clear as I begin to assemble the system. But I'm going to show you the assembly process and then in the second session of this video I will show you the individual parts in more detail. So to begin with the assembly, we have two pivot base pieces at opposite ends that are triangular. We have a four inch diameter axle. We have a number of cradles, four cradles, that are used to buckle the 55 gallon drum into place and then tip them safely on the axle. And we have a safety locking bar. In each of these I will show you how to uh, put them together safely. Normally two people would do this assembly or disassembly. Uh, in this example, one person is going to do it, that's me. And to do that, you're going to need some kind of supporting structure uh, to help and assist with the axle, which is heavy and somewhat awkward to handle. And we'll be looking at all of the parts and components separately in the follow-up on this video. But the key point is you only need pins, you don't need any bolts, you don't need any special tools. Uh, you do want to do this in an area where it's safe to, to spread the material out and do the assembly. So I will go through with the assembly, uh, making a few comments here and there, but in general, more detail will be apparent as we look at the individual parts after the assembly process. So to begin with, I have the axle laid out. I'm going to stand the pivot piece up, which is heavy and can tip, and I'm going to take the axle lift it up on one end and slide the axle into the pivot end piece. This is a little awkward, but it can't be done. and most important step. There is a hole in the pivot end piece and in the axle and you're going to want to get those aligned in the end to put the pins in to lock everything in place. You don't need to worry about that initially. In addition to the cradles, we have spacer units between the cradles. So to start with, I'm going to take one of the cradles and I'm going to put it onto the axle. And in order to do that, I'm going to first use my support structure for the axle, lift it up and put it in place. While I have the axle straight up, I'm going to rotate it so that the pinhole is facing straight up. It doesn't matter what order you take the axles in. However, you will notice that there's a bar on one side of the pivot support, and that's going to be a bar that a safety beam attaches to that these cradle arms will lock into. So the most important thing is put the cradles on in the proper position, which is the plate base foot of the cradle should be on the opposite side of the bar on the pivot. So we just simply pick this up, slide it down to the opposite end. As I get to my supporting structure, I can lift it up and slide it 
or a simple way to do it is to use the foot pad as a lever, lift the axle up, do this very carefully, move your support structure to the opposite side, and then slide it the rest of the way down. You slide it all the way until it meets the pivot. Put a spacer to follow. Now we're ready for the next cradle. Again, notice the foot pad goes on the opposite side of that bar that's on the pivot that I showed you. your job easier by using the cradle itself to lift the axle and get beyond your supporting block. spacer. So there's one spacer between each cradle. Then I'm ready for the next cradle. I'm going to use the foot pad as a lever to lift the axle. I'll just slide it further. Be very careful in this work not to drop this onto your foot or anyone else. So you see we have three cradles. We have one more spacer. Notice that my axle has rotated slightly, so I'm going to straighten that out, rotating it around. And I'm ready for my last cradle. So I'm going to move my support down a little bit. Last cradle goes into position. And now I'm ready for the pivot on the end. So I can pick that up and slide it in place. But before I put it in place, I want to get these two holes aligned to the same position. They're not aligned right now. So I need to rotate that. I can probably do it by just putting a pin into the slot and trying to rotate it. Or it's probably easier to just use the pivot support 
bring it around and up and then slide this forward should fit snugly on both ends. We're going to check the hole here and see if it's aligned. The hole is here. It needs to be rotated around a little bit. So if I tip this forward, slide this on. put this pin in. Alright, it's in. Now, if I drop this back down, the opposite end will be in line as well. So I can just slide everything back. push this last pivot support all the way in to make sure the hole is lined. It's lined up. I put the pin in place and it's locked. So all of these cradles are ready to go. Now I'm going to attach the safety arm. It can only fit in one direction. Every place you see a arrow pointing is where a pin belongs. We have two pins left. One pin drops into the pivot safety arm. On this end, same on the opposite end. The machine is completely now assembled. Normally I would be on this side. I would tip the barrel forward and lock it in position. So this is in the down position for tipping. It's a good idea to leave all the pins in place so that you don't lose them. And you now have a safe machine for tipping and controlling the barrels. There's also a belt that attaches and moves around the fermenter. And that needs to be secured to hold the barrel tightly in place before you tip the unit forward. I think that helps in showing you how to assemble the machine that is taken apart in the same way you just pull the pins and pull the parts off the machine. Use the support if you don't have a second person to help and do this carefully and you'll have a machine that will work well for years. Thank you very much. Hello, this is Dr. Larry Green again. We're looking at the offloading tool designed to handle four 55 gallon fermenters on a single time. Uh, the cradles which hold the 55 gallon fermenters in place can be tipped. And the barrels are strapped to each cradle. 
and they're locked into position with locking pins. Every place you see a arrow pointing is a location where there is a pin to be placed. On the pivot end you see a pin that goes directly into the axle. On the safety bar you see pins that lock the arm of the cradle. You will also notice that there are zerk fittings for each of the cradles and periodically you should put a general purpose grease onto the axle. You start out initially taking a can of grease and putting it on the inside of each cradle on the spacing pieces and in the pivot section where there's going to be contact with the axle and a light film of grease along the entire axle so that when you assemble it it's well lubricated and then thereafter you only need to add grease to the zerk fittings. You can see here an example of the belt that's used to secure the 55 gallon fermenter in place. The hooks just go into the D-bar and then the barrel can be cinched in securely to the cradle before it's tipped. And that's pretty much all there is to this tipping offloading tool. It can be assembled and disassembled in a matter of minutes. It does require care and safety to avoid injury because the parts are heavy, but it will allow you to take four 55 gallon fermenters and collect any liquid or tea from each of them safely without difficulty. Thank you very much.